I'm a mezzo-soprano, interdisciplinary artist and PhD student at Cambridge University and I'm from Düsseldorf in Germany. about the interrelation between machines and humans. Next week, I very much look forward to going to the Festival University and traveling to Linz in Austria and seeing you all. Today, it's really quiet. I can see no one but me walking here. Like usually, I see too few old ladies. Um, a parent and their kids but today it's only me it's so weird <laughs> maybe it's better because like people would, would think i'm crazy if i'm speaking english and <laughs> walking down the streets here with a camera so i'm really excited to be in lens in a few days few days from now so my scheduled uh, trip uh, it's on saturday september 4th but I'm still nervous because I didn't get my visa back. So now it's almost night and I'm going back from my walk. And as you see, there's no electricity in the houses because this is Lebanon. This is how we are living in these tough times. I really hope that this will change one day. The sooner the better. I'm 24 years old from Poland, Białystok, currently located in Labyrintha, Finland, where I do my master's degree in data-centric engineering. Uh, behind me is my place where I live and its surrounding. Just 10 minutes walk from my apartment. Behind me is the fourth biggest lake in Europe. Recently, someone very dear to me asked me whether do I miss Poland or not. I miss the people, I miss my dog, um, but I've never thought about myself as a citizen of a certain country. I usually start my day with reading news. Recent day is the most important thing is the, what's happening between the Polish and Belarusian border. There are many people who are seeking asylum, but who are not treated with respect by the Polish authorities. Everything what I can do is just look at my small screen and read something someone prepared for me. I'm Shreya Rajmane from India and I'm currently studying production science and management at DU Graz in Austria. When I think about Pune, Pune, the city where I grew up in India, would probably come close. But having been away from my hometown since almost six years, it is sort of hard to comprehend the concept of home. There are so many things which probably could be done better in the city. And one of the biggest problems I face during my time in Pune is with public transportation. It is so bad that everyone who can afford a two-wheeler has one. And with this high number of vehicles, we have this inherent traffic, pollution problem, and road safety problem. The other things I think really need to uh, transform in India would be the educational system. I'm really hoping to learn a lot of techniques during these two weeks to transform my world into probably a better world. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Welcome to the official kickoff of the Festival University. This moment 
is uh, not only the starting for an exciting experiment for us, but also intensive three weeks. Good morning, I am here at Düsseldorf Airport. A university should not be a factory. A university should be a festival itself. Hi, I'm here at the train station, ready to go to Linz. As Electronica is an organization that is dealing at the same time with art, technology and society. It's a cultural, educational and research institution. Hello everyone. So 42 years ago we embarked on this journey to investigate not only how technology creates an impact or changes our world, but in particular how to go a step further, not just to understand it, but to master it. I don't think there was one day within the last 60 years where 100 students coming from more than 40 countries met at this campus at the same time. It's really exciting for us. Thank you so much. So it's my first time here in Europe and uh, my first encounter with Europe was in Austria. So I'm really fascinated by all the organization and like uh, the transportation system and everything is so organized and this also inspires me to bring this uh, to my country, hopefully. And there is a lot of difference between my home country, Lebanon, and uh, Austria here. But there's no stray cats here. <laughs> So when they first, like my university, they sent uh, this uh, flyer for the festival university and, and I, I looked uh, at the, the brochure and I was like, wow, this is exactly calling for me. You know, like everyone is going for the technology nowadays, but don't forget about art. For me, like the transformative power mostly comes from people I meet. For me, the change would be uh, political changes. So educational system is something which you would need more politics rather than what we could do as individuals. So what I would say is the curriculum I always had is pretty outdated. I always have thought about this. Like since my childhood, I always wanted to change in the educational system. I mean, we are just starting now, but yes. I'm already also quite impressed by how fast I change my perception of yeah. that. So now it's, I think, for most of us, I think it's the first time that we have a uh, possibility to, to work with that. I would say that I learned more about which questions do we have to ask when we deal with robots than how to code a, a robot. This place is like a living proof of the change which is happening. Yeah, I think so. But they could think about the AC. I wouldn't mind. never done this before and a lot of us haven't done it ever. We have never danced or been on the stage in front of an audience or been on camera so it's kind of hard for us so we're gonna see how it works but I think we are more confident than we were a week ago.
time party. there would have been at that time there many opportunities for many people to do something again. For people to for do example, something in Great Britain. There was also a Nazi party. In there was also a Nazi party. But at the same time there was a strong workers' movement. People didn't allow the Nazis to march to allow the Nazis to march through London. And the Nazis never got the got the And the Nazis never got And also today. We all have opportunities to do so. We all have opportunities. From my part, that's the homework for you. Think about in your own country. What think about in your own country? you want to develop strategies, or at least think about how one could develop strategies for a transformed world, right? And we are still having in mind what we saw today. Is there any connection between the one and the other? Even the people who never you would have thought that they would abuse this power, they abuse this power. So yeah, basically now in Poland there's like this huge thing about the policemen who killed a Ukrainian guy. They say that they didn't do anything wrong. And uh, of course the evidence is otherwise, but they know that the government will help them, so they, they will face no consequences for their action. I, I, I find those similarities and I think it's really, really upsetting that we actually observing how the history might repeat itself. I think we have to deconstruct a bit this kind of um, picture of the charismatic leader and see um, arts and culture more as co-creative processes. I totally agree like, with this, because like, like, usually people like they're, they are attracted by a charismatic leader and this kind of things. However, when it comes to society and like uh, or culture and everyday life, I think uh, like, just like you were saying, like we need more people uh, who are collectively working together. For me, I think with transformation, what's important for me is to be ethical about it. So not just abiding by the laws or just on the legal side of it, but on the ethical point of view and also trying to be inclusive about everything. I think also that it's, it's very important that we, for example, have these climate committees where not only, I mean, we are not ruled as countries by climate scientists, but we are ruled by politicians that are trying to also look at lobbies from different sectors. Um, and so when we also create like climate committees of a lot of people that kind of represent um, our, um, our nation, then I think that's that's the very uh, issue there, or that's why they're doing it because we we want to see how can we holistically address these issues and not find this one very scapegoat. I don't know, it's like actually really strange to me, like the, because the topic is the transformation and like, um, you know, just the steel production is like really like the, the, the foundations, how it's produced is uh, like last century, I don't know, it's like oh, the, the old uh, industry trying to reinvent itself completely. 
they try to get like uh, carbon neutral uh, until 2050. It might be not enough. I think it's very interesting kind of how the aesthetics of the showroom are portrayed, how kind of the steel with the molecular like, structure is welcoming you in the foyer um, and how you kind of immerse in this steel. Um, steel world and also I find it interesting how kind of the arts are entangled with it or how artful approaches are, are taken um, to kind of create these aesthetic of beauty. They have a plan what, how to change the infrastructure, how to change the technology but to convey the meaning and how to translate it, show it to others they use art which is like it's faster to produce the art and what it follows in the future is the technology. Yeah, it's like a prototyping process, yes. right? So maybe something of the future could be just uh, producing 3D printed parts. Like they are currently producing titanium and steel out of 3D printing machines. So maybe that could be a better approach and that has a creative side because you need to kind of be creative with uh, what kind of machines you would use for the 3D printing or what kind of materials you would. So that's where the design thinking approach definitely comes in. Maybe, yes, technology can help to be climate neutral. Uh, or I think it's dif difficult that technology has to, to have the, ho the whole burden for renovating the future, for getting climate neutral. Um, and what I think is so interesting about it is, so last week I was at a workshop on circular economy and usually you have the example, oh yeah, we, we look at that from a private industry point of view. And this group already had like done five rounds of private industry and then they were like, oh, let's try it with an opera. And I was like, how can an opera house be <laughs> like a circular economy? You know, but I think these approaches we really need. I, I found it like at, uh, at the beginning it was more about the, the, the factories of things and now we have our factories of knowledge. So this oh, is their, the, yes, yes. So we are like the workers at the factory of knowledge. So I think the education is the, uh, the most important way like people need to understand, like not only do, but they need to have understanding why they do this, I think. Yeah, I kind of agree to that because I think my journey towards this also started when I saw a bunch of Netflix documentaries, which is probably like uh, not the best place to learn about things, oh. but surprisingly, it's the Why best not? place to learn yeah. about oh, things. Really so you would go with storytelling as a yes. solution? Yes, people are always interested when they see something pictorically or they some see something happening in a way of story. So it gets them more excited, I think. supposed to be four and not three. And this is the issue I really want to uh, turn your attention to. It's human dignity and human worth. So I was privileged enough to get the visa, the Schengen visa, in order to come to Austria. However, there was one student, she's my friend. However, just because she's Syrian, she didn't get the chance, she, they didn't give her the visa and it's really unfair. You know what? So they might, they are afraid that she comes here and like seek asylum or something especially in order to participate for a scientific conference, for a festival university that brings all young people, all young minds, in order to discuss the future and the transformation, just like as it is like uh, the topic of the festival university, transformation, like how can we change the world for the better? And if you're only going to invite people from certain countries and you're not going to uh, invite other people who are really in, in most need of change, 
like this is not going to be really helpful. And as, just as we were talking, in, in different countries there are maybe bigger need for different solutions. So maybe digital transformation, maybe agriculture, maybe something else. Yeah. So every country has its difference sure. and everyone knows what they are exactly need. So yeah, if we will just like yeah, and plant uh, take these the buildings and <laughs> move yeah. on to the other country, it shouldn't it wouldn't work. Yeah. But the, the idea behind it, that's yes. what I think. Yeah. I believe we could be those seeds. Like, we have experienced this exactly, festival yeah, together. Exactly. For example, if I go out to India, I can uh, kind of motivate people to go forward through yeah. with this. So why not we be the seeds for exactly, it instead of yeah. having someone else do it for yeah, us? Exactly. When I came here, I was with this approach that arts and technology are like two different things mm -hmm. and they're never going to come together. And now like there's this seed in my mind like, okay, now, there's a possibility there, of collaboration. There's already some Yes, shape. there's already something in my mind, like, it's been planted. <laughs> Okay, so basically what we are doing today, uh, we tried to discuss all the outcome when we went to the Ars Electronica. Two days ago we came up with three main ideas. The first idea is like a, a universal passport that, uh, like, uh, that is going to bring in people from all countries like uh, to move freely around countries like with no borders, with no visa requirements. Also like we were thinking about like, okay, if we have this autonomous vehicles, uh, we cannot have really autonomous vehicles without, ha within like the same uh, laws and like we're thinking about changing the basis of the world or like how the world works. But it is just a great thing. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to the official closing event of the first Festival University. Everything started, if you remember, on August 30th. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This moment should be exciting for us. Yeah, just like this uni Festival University was a platform for us to think about technology. But because we're such a diverse group, it turned out that it wasn't that much about technology, I guess, because we had other questions to deal with. I think like, like these kind of programs are really needed like today to break these stereotypes. We went through a pretty intense we program this last three weeks. Three weeks. We were actually confronted with a lot of right. questions that are a lot of questions. big scale, intimidating, big scale. And honestly, it evoked a lot of emotions in us. Emotions have the potential have to initiate movement instead of stagnation. Instead of stagnation. Emotions, when handled right, trigger a circular process of awareness that over the identification of the problem and identification lead to growth. Yeah, I think the future of education has to be much more discursive. For me, the education happened in the conversations, really. What was really important for me was also that the creative robotics team did not make a robot or the drones team did not make drones or something. Because after all, like you can learn like engineering at university, like at your home country or like anywhere. 
what's really unique about this festival university is that it's joining like uh, the human aspect with the technology part and with the artistic part so however i don't really think it's fair to say that we didn't really work on technology because like when it comes to me like this is like the greatest technology i have ever seen like in my life i think i really want to take this transform the world of the other transform your world theme with me creating this new mindset that uh, we have now. For me, when I came here, I was really sure that I wanted to work in the industry and not in, be involved in research. But in my postcard, I wrote that, think about research, think about doing something better, not just being in the industry, being a capitalist like everyone. I feel that energy and it gives me hope that there are people who want to change the world. So I think um, this is what maybe Gafka Schocker also means with the, uh, with the term of the not being a factory. I think the university should be more of a festival. Um, yeah.